Well, now look at the second type of improper integrals, which are unbounded integrands. So the idea here is that our function actually doesn't exist at a certain point. We're going to assume that the limit as x approaches some number a from the right of f of x is either plus or minus infinity. So in that case, the integral from a to b of f of x dx is the limit as c approaches a from the right of the integral from c to b of f of x dx. And this meant that our function was unbounded on the lower integrand, but it can, the lower um, bound of integration, but it can also be true for the upper limit of integration. This time we're gonna suppose the limit as x approaches b from the left of f of x is plus or minus infinity. In this case, the integral from a to b of f of x dx is the limit as c approaches b from the left of the integral from a to c f of x dx. So we'll do some examples, but one of the biggest questions I usually see at this point is getting confused with the right-hand limits and the left-hand limits and when to know to do which one. So hopefully as I do some examples, I will explain exactly how you can figure out whether you should have a right-hand or a left-hand limit. Let's start with the integral from zero to eight of one over the cube root of x dx. This function is not defined at the point zero which is why this is an improper integral. So we're gonna have to take the limit. As c approaches zero, and this does need either a right or a left, but I'll talk about that in just a second. The integral from c to eight of, I'm gonna go ahead and write this as x to the minus one third dx. So now, how do I know if this is a right hand limit or a left hand limit? Well, let's think about this. We want to integrate over the number 0 to 8. And all of these numbers are to the right of the number 0. So I'm going to want to take this limit to the right because all the numbers that I care about are to the right of 0. This is now the limit as c approaches 0 from the right of, we're going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by that number between c and 8. So we have three over two times eight to the two thirds minus the limit as c approaches zero from the right of three over two x to the two thirds. Sorry, I mean of c to the two thirds. If I evaluate this first term, I will get six and the limit is c approaches zero from the right of three halves c to the two thirds. Well, the two thirds power of zero is going to be zero times anything is zero. So we have zero. So our final answer here is just six. The next one I have the integral from one to two of one over the square root of x minus one dx. And before I deal with the bounds of integration, I'm gonna realize that our function here, we need to do a change of variables. We need to do a u substitution. I'm gonna let u be x minus one, and then du is equal to dx. This thing gives me the integral of one over the square root of u. I'm gonna write that as u to the minus one half, du. As x is one, u is going to be zero, and as x is two, u will be one. So this time we're actually undefined at, the at zero. So I'm gonna take the limit as c approaches zero, the integral from c to one of u to the minus one half du. And once again, we need to think about is this a right or a left limit? And if we think about this, we realize that all the numbers between zero and one are going to be to the right of zero. So once again, we need a right-hand limit. We then have the limit as c approaches zero from the right. We add one to the exponent and divide by that number between c and one. So now I have two times one to the one half minus the limit as c approaches zero from the right of two times zero to the one half. This is two minus zero, sorry, c to the one half. Two minus zero, 
So our final answer is 2. Now let's look at the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of tangent theta. We know that tangent is actually not defined at pi over 2, so we're going to take the limit as c approaches pi over 2 of the integral from 0 to c of tangent theta. This time, when we think about it, all the numbers between 0 and pi over 2 are to the left of pi over 2, so we're going to take a left-hand limit. We now have the limit as c approaches pi over 2 from the left of well, the integral of tangent is the natural log of secant between 0 and c. So now I have the limit as c approaches pi over 2 from the left of ln of secant theta, or secant c, minus ln of secant 0. We know that secant of 0 is 1 and ln of 1 is 0, so that gives us a minus 0 on the right-hand term. However, the first term is more complicated. Secant is actually undefined at pi over 2, but we do know that the limit as secant approaches pi over 2 from the left is infinite, and so ln of x as x approaches infinity is also infinite. So our integral here is just infinite.